check, mic check. My guy, Blair, how you living? How you doing? How you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you. You did a good mic check too, bro. I appreciate it. Okay. Can you can you see me? Is I can't video? see it. There we go. That's the Blair the Flare I know and love. <laughs> love to okay. see it. HD too. Love that. Perfect. Perfect. So I got to ask you, bro, I'm not one of these guys that goes on the internet and looks at things. I reach out to people and stuff. What's going on with this Connor Ben? Your name's in the headlines. That's a fight I really want to see. Um, what's going on, bro? Uh, honestly, I want to see it too. We'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I haven't got any confirmation on it or anything like that. Been training though. I'm ready for a fight. Um, if they want to fight, it's going to be a big fight. It's going to be worthy and it's going to put somebody at number one spot. So we got to see what happens. Blood of Flair is here and ready. Um, let's see what happens. But that's that's where it is with me right now with uh, Connor Ben. Got to ask some real law enforcement like questions. Is there any validity to these rumors? Like, has there been anyone reaching out, or are they just rumors? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's there's been there's been talks, there's been talks, and um, people reaching out. But we gotta see, we gotta see the paper. We gotta see the the paperwork. We gotta see a promotion. Um, I think it would do um the boxing world and everyone not just me a uh, disjustice by under promoting and trying to make this a quick little hurry up and get the fight done situation um that's where like we have to probably renegotiate like why are we why are we trying to get a fight within uh four weeks when we could be getting a fight that makes sense within six to seven uh, six to eight weeks and um and make a real profit you know, where it's a fair fight, you can't say that he, like, isn't, like, where he's supposed to be at that point. You know, we have a whole lot of young fighters that ain't get nothing done, ain't really do nothing in boxing and got a whole lot of circumstantial fights to get where they're at. And boxing is sick of it. I say, let's let's make it happen. But let's make it happen under the right circumstances where you get to see the best out of each fighter. So what I'm hearing, and I'm not always the brightest guy, so Blair helped me with this, is you want more of like a main event spot that can be properly promoted, your personality, Connor Ben has a personality, make it into like a a big uh, fall fight. Yeah, why not? Because it can make money. And like they're chasing like Kel Brooks or somebody like a whole bunch of stupid motherfuckers. They could actually be fighting me and making real money that's way worth all of it it's way better than the than the Kell Brook fight it's way better than fighting some guy that's like way over the hill like uh like Adrian Brown or somebody like that you know what I mean like just fighting guys that like they're old busted and rusty and dusty and we can just be fighting somebody that's real like Blair or Flair and promote the goddamn fight and regardless of who wins like you still got a world champion on your hands. If Connor Ben wins, you got a world champion. If Blair Flair wins, you sign Blair to Flair and you got a world champion. You know what I mean? That's taking over the division. It doesn't matter who wins at that point. You know what I mean? It's a win-win for Matchroom. It's a win-win for for the European fans. It's a win-win for US fans. It's a win-win for boxing. That's what we need. Are you out of your Golden Boy deal? Um, yeah, I'm out, I'm out of Golden Boy, but we got like, we got some situation going on. They need to give me a release statement so I can move forward. If they don't give me a release statement, we have to go ahead and take them to court. So that's what we're doing. We're taking them to court and things are happening at a very rapid pace. We have a very, very um strong um lawsuit against them and um they need to just react react and get it done and get it over with before they have to pay more money because the longer i'm out of work the longer i'm not like in a position because somebody like me has to take bigger deals i can't take just fight by fight deals i'm not i'm not over the hill i'm not like a one fight guy um i'm taking multiple fight contracts we have pvc waiting we have match room waiting we have a lot of big fights like Adrian Broner waiting. We have a lot of big things happening. Um, and the only thing that's holding back all of that stuff is this um is this uh this contract with Golden Boy. 
now where we over we overextended the 90 day period of the um of the right of refusal the right of refusal state it, it puts people in a position where there's actually no there is no like um negotiation if matchroom or if if top rank puts out puts out uh let's say a um a, an offer all golden boy have to do is just match that offer they a golden boy puts out puts out their offer of course a low deal and then they and then they lowball it and then i take it to another promoter that gives me a better offer and then golden boy just match it and then i'm stuck with golden boy and that puts it puts people in a position where as though it could be a lot of waste of time with um with other promotions so that's what we're doing and that's what's going on so now but the whole thing is i can still pull off a one fight move and one fight deals and um and all of this stuff with golden boy is getting handled at a very very rapid pace so i look forward to um fighting very very soon regardless if it's connor ben or not um connor ben is a great fighter a tremendous athlete and um i take nothing away from him um but the thing is we need to see great fights happen you know um and that's just what it is Given your contract situation, do you think that could interfere with your fight, the uh, hopes of a fight in the fall with Connor Ben, or do you think that, like you said, one-off deals you can you could probably do that? Yeah, no, I think I can I can probably do it still, um, and and make that fight happen regardless. Um, honestly, money moves it all. You know, if they if they really want to, if they really want the fight, and they really want to do certain things, and they give me a deal, you know what I mean. Give me a deal that makes sense. I could show them the Golden Boy deal. We can be it. We can be in negotiations, and um, and give me a good offer, an offer that makes sense to a point where um, where Golden Boy doesn't intervene. You know what I'm saying? I mean, at this point, like Golden Boy really doesn't have any say so in anything I do. It's just I just have to get through the legal precautions of getting a legitimate um release form signed. You know what I mean? But beyond that, like our contract is expired. Um, and this doesn't take me from the fact that like I still acknowledge Golden Boy as a as like one of the best promoter promotional companies in the world. And it doesn't like take away from the fact that like, yeah, I would like to work with Golden Boy if they if they're for me. See, the thing is, like, I've been fighting against Golden Boy, and that's how I got to where I am. You know, I fought big fights consistently back to back to back that I'm not supposed to win. You're B-side you know? guy. You took a yeah. lot of B-side fights. I took tons of B-side fights. You know what I'm saying? And some of them not even close to fair. So the thing is, right now, like, I've proven my value. I've proven my goddamn value. People want to talk to Bladderflip. People want to hear Bladderflip. People want to know what's going on with Bladderflip. I got a big story that they could be they could be capitalizing on right now to captivate and bring in a array of audience, including the Mexican fan base. I have a lot of good things working for me. Now the whole thing is, on top of all of that, I can fight, and I don't mind taking big big fights and big gambles because I believe in myself. So then you have, you have a pretty big thing happening, but then it's like, Oh no, but I want Virgil Ortiz to be the guy. Yeah. Okay. But then what's, watch what's happened. You know what I mean? Okay. Virgil ain't fighting no more. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. But I want this guy to be the guy. Okay. Well, does he, does he really fight Blair to Flair in a fair fight? Do, do he win? Cause if he doesn't, and if it's too risky, then put his ass to the side and let Bladder Flair do what he's supposed to do. And that's just what it was supposed to be. Like, um, I feel like um boxing is depriving the fans of true greatness and what um and what boxing was really all about. It was never about politics. It was never about this, it was never about that. It was really about the entertainment and the measure of a man's character. People want to see tests. And lately, we haven't seen any tests from any of these top athletes since, you know, it's just it's just a lot of, you know. Well, we got a lot of businessmen and we don't got a lot of Matthew Saeed Mohammed's. Yeah. A great way to put it. Like we got a Perfect. lot of guys that are like 
how can I fight the easiest fights to become a world champion, get paid a ton, and then how can I go into favorable matchups? And why I'm a fan of you is you took a fight with Fernando Caribbean in his hometown, basically. Most guys wouldn't do that. You take all these fights that really might, mighty Mo hooker. That's a fight where you're kind of going into up against it and you win fights to prove, Hey, I can really fight. And we're not seeing that all the time um, in this generation. No, absolutely. And that's, and that's the thing that we have to get back to and promoters needs to value those people, those people that like that make it through that type of fire. You know, you would think that like um, after the Caribbean fight, I'm winning, I'm winning a title, the NABF uh, junior title. You would think that I'll be taken care of, but no, but then they have to give me another undefeated fighter, Robert Redman. He had only one loss before me and I looked into it. It was, he's basically undefeated. He's a good that was fighter. The, he was a good yeah, fighter. He was actually a good fighter, uh, um, golden glove champion. So again, I'm trying to, like, I'm supposed to lose. And then they, and then they fight me against another undefeated fighter. And um and Villa Lobos, and then I fight another guy that's like pretty much, like he has a cast iron chin, and Ortiz, you know what I mean? And I get that done, you know what I mean? I'm sitting here wondering like, how the hell am I going to knock this dude, dude, this dude out? Cause, like I've seen him fight guys that's twice his size, you know what I mean? And still not get knocked out. He might have stumbled a little bit, and they hurry up and try to like wave it off. He's never been hurt. You know, and then you see me doing the impossible, you know, um, I just feel like, uh, like, how long does it have? Like, how many how many fights do I have to do to prove that, like, I'm worthy? You know, it, it gets to the point where I have to, like, I had to cut Golden Boy out of the whole picture and just talk straight to the zone. Like the zone, I need you to put me on the uh, on the Canelo fight card. I need you to put me on the Ryan Garcia fight card. I need you to put me on the main branch, on the main on the main um stage. It just gets to a point where like I cannot allow politics, promotion, and nonsense get in the way of greatness because it's defri it's depriving me. Of my of my true potential and it's depriving the boxing community. Um and that's and that's just what it is. We um we passed the whole the whole stage of of Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford. And we know what happened with that. You know, it was a whole lot of publicity, a whole lot of talks and a whole lot of this, but the real came out real fast. And um and I can predict the exact same thing happening to Ennis, to Ortiz, to pretty much all of those guys. You know what I mean? It could happen to Ben. It could happen to a lot of those guys. You know, all of these top guys that that like everybody's talking so highly. Promotion that put out a whole lot of money to promote them and all this stuff. All of that can come crashing down with blood or flare. Yeah, um, you've obviously you you're not one to shy away from PEDs to the point where um your conversations have gotten you in hot water at times. Connor Ben, it's hard to not look at the fact that his story is basically prospect, <clears throat> and then he gets busted, and now he's returning, and it it's kind of it. I don't want to say shady, but there's a the huge gray area around his career after testing positive for whatever substance allegedly prior to the Chris Eubank Jr. fight. Like any fight coming back, obviously you might not want to say anything because you, the fight's on there, but I'm interested in your perspective on this because it is part of the story. Well, I like I've learned quite a bit about like the harmful effects of, of steroids when it comes to rhabdomyolysis and how it correlates together. Um, because nobody knows what rhabdomyolysis is. <laughs> I, I guess you guys can't like do enough research, but it's okay. Um, but then we have that situation. Um, and then the whole Connor Ben being popped for obviously steroids, you know what I mean? Steroid use. And it's kind of, it's kind of evident that he's a user. Um, and possibly still use it. I mean, once you get on that stuff, it's kind of hard to get off of it type of thing. You know what I mean? I, I like, that's that's what I've hear, heard from like other athletes and things like that because everybody wants that that edge. 
everybody's looking for that edge. And it's a shame because none of them really believe in God. And my edge is God. I take over. I take over. Even when you beat me, you didn't beat me. You know what I'm saying? Even when you stopped me, you didn't stop me. You know, right after right after um, um, Alexis Rocha with like only two week notice. Um, guess what? I come back even bigger and better than ever before with a fight that's a top 10 fighter. Hold up. Alexis Rocha still having not fought a top 10 fighter. Would I have actually been like where he's at in the ranking if I had beat Alexis or would I just be like, oh, yeah. Well, after that, we're not going to give you another fight for another year. We're going to let your contract expire. No, they were expecting me to fucking lose against Maurice Hooker. And that's why they promised me Virgil Ortiz. And I said, okay, bet. And then right after the fight of Maurice Hooker, you know what I mean? It wasn't a dull fight. It wasn't like I barely made it. I destroyed him. I destroyed him inside and out. And I learned and like I show people that I can dominate from round one to round 10. You know what I mean? And if we go to round 11 and 12, I would do the exact same thing, winning each round. Um, that takes that takes a little bit of discipline that I had to learn and I had to have the right trainers to help me, uh, to groom me to be that guy instead of Mr. I want to get everybody knocked out. Flair the Flair, you said something that I didn't know. So I got to <laughs> circle back you you were told you were going to fight Virgil Ortiz and that didn't happen. I need to know more about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Golden Boy has been known to, like, make a whole lot of promises and not actually, like, move forward on those promises because based on, like, the, all of them are based on, like, uh, let's say, um, like, circumstances circumstances everything is circumstances nowadays people are fighting fights and they're not even real fights they're circumstantial fights the win against um the win that alexis rocha had got against blood of flair was a circumstantial fight it was a circumstantial fight because he wouldn't have been able to win not nearly not even close and it's been proven you know what i mean he wouldn't even get close to beating me if it was an actual fight that was real, that was promoted over the course of guests, like, you know, six to eight weeks, you know what I mean? Which will bring a whole lot more money in because I sold that motherfucker after only like a couple of days, you know, only a couple of days that they like that they knew that I was fighting. And then like <laughs> and then they sold the whole fight, you know, and Golden Boy had had told that to me. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, when we got this fight, just, you know, like they, they, like they automatically started paying, paying for the fight. Like, yeah, so they wasn't really paying for Virgil Ortiz and, and McKinson. Okay, okay, but anyways, beyond all of that, the whole thing is a lot of these fights are circumstantial fights. Golden Boy likes circumstantial fights that they can control and manipulate. You know, and like the whole thing with the Maurice Hooker fight. The Maurice Hooker fight was a was a con controlled fight that they thought that they could manipulate and maneuver. And they thought that I would lose. They thought that I would at least have a hard go. You know what I'm saying? That I would show that, like, no, I'm I'm not a, a, a top 10 fighter. I'm not possibly the best fighter today. I am just Blair the Flair that talks a lot of trash and that's probably going to get his ass whipped. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. So, of course, they they uh they put up this whole thing like, oh yeah, um, look, Blair, if like you're back on top, yeah, it's funny because the moment I take a loss, I get a fight right away. You know what I mean? I take a loss, I came back right away. Okay, perfect. I got another fight. You know what I'm saying? And not like the one right before that, where another year went by, with um with um Brad Solomon. It's just a lot of nonsense. So I get the fighting and um and I win. Now they promised me a hundred percent. Hey, after this fight, Virgil Ortiz. After this fight, Virgil Ortiz. And then like, you know what I mean? And you're back on top. You're back on top. Okay. And I said, okay, perfect. You know, and um I, I got I got out there. I did what I had to do. Um and and then after that. There was nothing. 
There was nothing. There was no, oh, yeah, um, all right, now you're back in there, so let's get you in there with Virgil Ortiz. I'm calling him, like, so I bought that Virgil Ortiz. I guess I guess it's only Virgil Ortiz when you know I'm going to lose. <laughs> oh. Was that the point where you kind of felt like you had a splintered relationship with Golden Boy? Was it that moment? No, I, I got I never had a, a, a bad a, like a um a bad relationship with Golden Boy. I just want them to do what they say. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it's like this. Like, yeah, I might I might be older, but I had a growth spurt at 29. Yeah, I might um I might be a little raw. Yeah, that's because I haven't had a whole bunch of circumstantial fights to build me up. But like you can't say I don't sell. I like you can't say that, oh yeah, well, well, we're looking for the Mexican fan base. You can't say I don't sell to the Mexican fan base. You can't say nothing. There's nothing that you can say that can like that can make sense to stop me at all. So like it's just it's just one of those things. Like, yeah, you didn't see me coming, but guess what? I'm here now. You know what I'm saying? No, you didn't. You signed me with the idea that you was just going to knock me off with Caribbean. You know what I mean? And build Caribbean up. And that didn't work. You know what I mean? And then you thought that, Bert, like, oh, this would be a great time to sign via Lobos. And it didn't work. You know what I mean? It, like, it just didn't work. And then, like, oh, yeah, okay, perfect. We got rid of you. With, um, We got you down with... um with Alexis Rocha. It was a it was a late notice fight. It was only like a couple day notice fight practically. So but but we got you. So now I think that you might be done. But it didn't work. You know? And they used me as chips to try to get the um to get the um Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence fight done. And it didn't work. They thought they would sign sign Terrence Crawford and used me as a bargaining piece to help out his best friend, Maurice Hooker. That didn't work. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of craziness. And I just, uh, it gets frustrating dealing with this kind of nonsense because I would like to just fight. You know what I mean? I would like to just fight just like anybody else and do what I do best. But it always seems to be like something in the way. And boxing is dying without me. Boxing is getting incredibly boring. Boxing is dying. You know, at, at, like right now, like Golden Boy is so busy chasing, chasing like politics that they forgot about entertainment. So much so that their boss, the zone, is not even, they don't even want to promote those type of fights anymore. They got, they just keep popping out with these YouTubers and influencer fights back to back to back to back to back to back to back. And those aren't even really selling that well. But just because, you know, we have a, a YouTuber that was selling pretty good, they're just going to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And hopefully they can, can strike big. They starting to take away their power with Golden Boy and start putting it into other avenues. Boxing is losing its strength. Um, Blair the Flair is what boxing needs and everything that comes behind Blair the Flair. All the other entertainers, all the other um, influential fighters that um, that puts on a big show, they, they need these type of fighters. So... Um, I got a question uh -huh. for you. Like... I've always seen you as a pro wrestler yeah. along with a boxer. Have you ever thought about being like a pro wrestling manager that does a couple of in appearance, but you're a great, you're great at talking. I feel like you could like easily go into pro wrestling and be like, boxing sucks. I couldn't get my fight. So I had to come into pro wrestling and build this stable and get this group of guys because we need to make sports entertainment. Great. Have you ever considered doing that? Because it just seems like such a no brainer in the modern era there's all these pro wrestlers that have basically real fighting backgrounds since the age of time. Like I just, I've always wondered if you ever thought about doing that. Oh, I thought I always think about doing that. Like if, if, if the um, WWE um, commissioner, like, or um, chairman hit me up and say, Hey, like, um, I think that you will be a good fit. I think we should do 
maybe like a good two year contract and get you going and see and see where things lie. You know what I mean? Get you in there. Let's see what Blood of Flair does in the WWE world. I would love to take that take on that task and see what happens. Um, boxing is losing its its rhythm. Um, but the whole thing is, like the WWE world has kind of lost its lost a lot of steam too. It's just um, and I think it's lost its steam from from the MMA world and uh, UFC and all that stuff. So I don't know. I've been look. I've been looking into all that stuff. I've been looking into like going into the UFC, going into all that stuff. You know, um, Blair the Flair. Wait, 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 you Blair the Flair's thing about doing UFC? Do you even have wrestling background? I got a lot. I got a very interesting background in general. Like I'm just an extremely unbelievable athlete. An athlete with incredible fast feet and fast hands, fast reflexes. And um and like and a body to bring all that together. Like it's just not that many people out there like me. You know what I mean? That can do those type of things that I do. It's just not. I mean, it happens every once in a once in a while. You know, so yeah, I thought about it. I thought about doing UFC, getting my getting my shins strong enough to take on kicks, um, getting some pretty good defensive um grappling skills i have some grappling skills already in brazilian jiu-jitsu um i have Old some school chuck liddell just just make sure they can't take you down and put paws on them yeah yeah that's basically what it is i mean some of the best ones were that really good defensive skills good movement fast feet movement like kind of like takes everything to guess what now we got hands you can't take me down Cause I'll sprawl off and I'll and I'll get out of it and then boom, you 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 just ran into a a five piece McNugget. It it happens, you know what I'm saying? It happens to the best of them. Even even Conor McGregor was really like a a boxer more so than like like a a grappling wrestler or anything like that. You know, he just have really good technical like like um defensive skills for grappling really defensive skills for kicking and he pulls you into counters and punches blood if i can do the exact same thing yeah. blair i want because you're a phenomenal athlete um crawford <clears throat> saying he'd fight canelo at 168 uh is that a good idea how do you look at that because i feel like you're the type of dude that would take a fight like that what do you think of that type of fight I think Crawford loses to Blair Flair. Period. Um, well, you're supposed to. I'm, you're supposed to think that Blair. Like you're in the wrong um, business if you're like, oh man. But it's like, not just thinking. I know. Like the whole thing is, sooner or later he has to face me. Period. You know, like that's just the end of that story of his of his boxing career is Blair to Flair. So you're the final boss in the video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Um, Canelo, I think he beats him. Honestly, is it the movement? Yeah, Canelo can't handle a lot of movement. He can't handle a lot of punches, and like Crawford's not a lot of punches. He won't throw a whole lot of punches, but he'll figure out a way to get off good punches. Um, Crawford is patient enough to watch every movement and know that like some of his punches are, I mean, some of his movement is going to be falsified um data to like get you tricked into a punch canelo is a very very crafty fighter that likes to do certain things just to get you used to seeing something and then set you up with for a big shot um but that won't work out for another person that's just as good as a technical fighter now the whole thing is yeah weight could be an issue but then look they have only 10 ounce gloves on Punches are going to hit. Punches are going to hurt sooner or later, regardless, no matter what. A dead punch in the face is going to hurt you, regardless. You know what I mean? Um, Crawford is not a pillow puncher at all. He might not be a devastating puncher, but he will hurt you, regardless. If you don't see the punch coming, you're going down. Um, Canelo, if he gets in the ring with... Crawford, just like if he got in a ring with me at, at some level, at, at like that high level of um of readiness, 
um, no, Canelo doesn't stand a chance. You know what I mean? He's better off with the fighter that he's fighting. You know what I mean? Because honestly, I think that was a pick me fight. That was just a hurry up and let me just pick that fighter and get that fighter out of there right quick. What do you um, see in that? Like, why do you think that's a hand picked? Uh, because I've heard a lot of people say that. Is that why do you see that? Almost every fight that Canelo's fight fought in recent times were cherry picking fights. Every single one. And matter of fact, the um the Bevo fight was a cherry picking fight. Everybody thought that he was just going to just run through Bevo. It just didn't work out the way he planned. You know what I'm saying? Because if he was really a man, he would have fought Bitter Beef, and Bitter Beef would have put him on him, like, and, and and probably killed the man. He probably would. I mean, Bitter Beef's no friend. joke. Like that guy yeah. hits extremely hard. But hey, if you want to chase greatness, you fight that motherfucker and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? That means that you really gotta believe in God, and you gotta see a miracle in the ring. Like you gotta see a miracle in that ring. You know what I mean? Hey, now you with Blair Flair. You in my you in my ball game now. Let's see what happens. Well, I feel you like know? Better Beef is a guy. I'm glad you brought it up because, like, he never gets fights because he just hits so friggin' hard. And there's just like one guy a year that'll fight him. Yeah. And, like, check this out. This dude is 38 years old. He, like, matter of fact, I think he's 39 years old. People still waiting for him to get old. <laughs> it ain't working. It ain't working. Today's world, people need to stop thinking that age is really that thing that that that's killing people. You know what I mean? Instead of like every like all these other nuances. Um really to tell you the truth, like like it's just age is not the same what it used to be. So when they have these guys talking about some, oh yeah, well we have this young fighter and like, okay, it's a young unseasoned fighter that never went through anything. Yeah, he has 20 easy circumstantial fights. And didn't do shit. Um, what's going to happen is he's going to face somebody, and things are going to change up. You know, what I mean, then we got to see who he really is. Final just, words for Connor Ben. Um, man, let's make the fight happen. Final, final words for Connor Ben is let's make the fight happen. Um, good luck with everything. Stay clean, and like honestly, honestly, like. I can't say that I'm a fan as much as I'm a friend. Like I like I really like Connor Ben and um it was un it was it was a uh, kind of disappointing knowing that he uh that he got popped for steroids and like there's no amount of like excuses about eggs that like to say that like you know that he wasn't on it. You know what I mean? Um I'm happy that they figured out a way to like keep him, you know get him out of that that fire and um yeah let's let's see what happens next you know what i'm saying um i don't think and this is something with matchroom i don't think a fight with tell brooks and all that stuff is really even worthy um the best worthy fight is blair the flare um and we need to see top fights like that happen I mean, because after me, there's only one other fighter after that, and that's Jerron Ennis. <laughs> Do you think he's going to beat Jerron Ennis then? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so it's just, you know, we need to see what happens. Um, Blair, you're a true gentleman. You're you're a class act in this sport, and you always do the interviews and you always promote yourself and you always take the hard fights, bro. You're really You're really a gift in the modern era, bro. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, man. It's it's a headache. Um, people like me can't get enough credit. Look at my fights. Look at like my fights. Look at my career. Like there's guys out there right now that are crying about a one year layoff. I've taken so many crazy long layoffs. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's already been a year now with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not crying about it. I'm not like in depression. Like I've conquered depression. You know what I mean? I've conquered depression. I've conquered all that stuff, you know, and I did it with God and people don't believe God anymore. 
And that's the problem. And that's the reason why, like, people like me trump those guys. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, um, in the end, it's all in God's hands. And that's, and that's just what it is, you know, um, regardless of what you believe. And, like, you know, if you believe in the universe or this and that, like, it's just, in the end, it's in that hands. And, um, and we just got to see that again. We got to see that again. You know, um, and hopefully soon we can bring boxing back because even that last fight with, with Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford, it was like it was super highly anticipated. But one fighter like under. Like he like it was just like ridiculous. It wasn't even a close fight, you know. Like, it had us wondering, like, why were we even talking about this stupid-ass fight in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Like, we we like we like want surprises is the whole thing. We you want good I mean? fights, Blair. We want good fights, surprises, and drama, you know? And um, and that's what myself comes to try to do. Is come, I'm, I'm, I'm putting on drama. Yeah, I would fight these crazy fights. I'm not supposed to win, at least on paper, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, and I go out there and I do my thing, you know, on paper. I'm not supposed to beat a Conor Ben. And then the fight happens and we're wondering how the hell Conor Ben was supposed to beat Blair to Flair. Like, it happens, man. It just happens. You know what I mean? But that's that's what we need. We need those type of fighters, you know? And um, it's people like you that keep boxing great by like constantly coming out and supporting these underdog stories and getting these stories out. So I thank you to the absolute Well, that's best. all I do. I'm I'm the king of the underdog. I'm going to write this up and it'll be up in an hour. I wish I had the premium version of Zoom, but I am the underdog. So we got to do it in the 40 minute version. So they're about to kick me off. But yeah. Blair, I've always enjoyed getting to know you over the years, and I really hope you can get this fight, and I hope you get paid fair. Absolutely, man. I I, I look forward to it. Uh, we need to get this fight done. Let's get it done. Let's get it promoted, and let's make a whole lot of money, and let's bring boxing back to its full potential. That's all I want to see. That's all I want to do, and that's that's what um that's what boxing's about. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, it's been a wonderful um experience. You're the man, you Blair. Traveling through my through my um my journey. Well, I mean, you're the man, Blair. You're just you're the man, and I will talk to you soon. I gotta jump off, so I'm gonna jump off until the next big fight. But you're the man.